just Good morning. This is soil conservationist Sangeeta Gamadi of the Natural Resources Conservation Service with your weekly conservation report. Welcome to monsoon season in Minnesota. As the weekend gets underway, many people will be out on the lake. I personally was looking forward to doing the mighty Mississippi paddle. I was going to be joining a thousand paddlers, canoe and kayak along the Mississippi River. Uh, this morning, the event was canceled uh, due to dangerously high water levels. And I feel like the impact of the high water levels has impacted all across Minnesota. More locally, Stearns County Sheriff's Office issued a no-wake advisory for all county lakes because of the unusually high water levels. No-wake rules are designed to protect and limit erosion to shorelines, levees, and islands. In particular, if you're going to be boating on the chain of lakes in Sauk River area around Cold Spring and Richmond, as well as Two River Lake in St. Anna, boaters are being asked to use caution. Between the no-wake zones imposed on overflowing lakes and cool soggy weekends with mosquito populations so big you can hear them giggling in the background, many of us are feeling a little cheated right now. Endure the harshness of a Minnesota winter and your reward will be a magical summer, right? I guess the positive here is we'll be paying less for air conditioning. While well, rainfall for the last 30 days is already three to eight inches above average for portions of central Minnesota. We see evidence of that clearly throughout the county. Much of that is seen in ponded water, sometimes a few inches and up to almost two feet deep of water. If you're a farmer who is looking at prevent plant as an option, consult your crop insurance person on the specifics on what can and cannot be planted. If you're interested in what to plant or different seeding options, give us a call at the Stearns County Conservation Office in Waite Park. There are several options that can be considered for cover cropping. Among several alternative practice for seeding cover crops, aerial seeding has allowed farmers to fit cover crops into their corn-soybean rotation. The aerial seeding practice has grown over the past few years um, and has seen some limitations with unpredictable weather and high costs. Other methods to consider include applying a coating to the seed. There are a few options here, one being a temperature activated polymer type of coating that allows germination to occur above certain soil temperatures. Another option is minimizing, soil, uh, minimizing trips across the field and decreasing compaction in your soils through applying your cover crop seed with manure through a slurry seeding and applying it after harvest of the cash crop. Having your soils covered is truly important. And while the evidence of the heavy rainfalls are fresh in our minds, consider installing grass waterways to repair the gullies caused by heavy rain. A lot of that evidence we see is in the silt and sand deposits at the end of gullies towards the end of our fields consider installing a sediment basin to control erosion throughout the field. If you live along a stream or a lake, consider grading or stabilizing the stream bank or seeding native vegetation for water quality and wildlife habitat. As a landowner, there are many steps that you can take to repair the heavy rain damage as well as better prepare for these heavy spring rains. Now, before the corn gets too high and you can no longer see the erosion, now is the time to visit with a soil conservation technician to have them come out and visit with you at your field, evaluate the soil erosion issues, and talk through some solutions. Another option to consider in exchange for not growing crops on the land and preventing soil erosion, improving water quality, and restoring wildlife habitat by planting grasses or trees, the Farm Service Agency, FSA, provides farmers with cost share assistance and annual rental payments through the Conservation Reserve Program, CRP. Currently, their continuous sign-up is happening, so be sure to stop in the FSA office in Wake Park and ask about their CRP sign-up. As we move into tomorrow, Father's Day, I wanted to leave you with one last thing. In 1900, if a father put a roof over his father's head, his family's head, he was a success. Today, it seems to take a roof, deck, 
pool and a four-car garage, and that's just the vacation home. <laughs> Many things have changed, but in honor of the fathers who have sacrificed for their families, thank you. Again, this is Sangeeta Kamadi with the Natural Resource Conservation Service in Stearns County. Thank you for listening to your weekly conservation report.